Hello YouTube, welcome back. This is part two of reproducing the iron stand from Sutton Hoo. So in this episode we are going to be reproducing the capital which sits on top of the stand. Uh, it's quite an interesting element. Uh, it's mounted with four bull heads um, and it's shaped uh, like a cross. So to do this we're going to be using 100mm of 20 by 50 and I've divided it into three parts, marked up at 35, 30 and 35 mil. And I have centre dotted down the centre of both 35 mil sections and we are going to split down those marks. So to start off with, I figured I'd try and do it in a potential Anglo-Saxon manner. Yeah, so basically sit it upright and cleave it with a chisel. However, this was quite time consuming with just me on my own and the bar fell over a few times. So in the end, I decided that I would pretend I had a helper with some tongs and stick it in the vise. Uh, and at that stage, it progressed a lot quicker. So keep an eye out to make sure that you are stopping at the right spot because um, you don't want to over split this. And you end up with something that looks a little bit like a chromosome. So at this stage I'm going to use a big wedgy thing, uh, which is its official name, uh, which is basically a right angle swage and I'm going to stick this over a sharp edge of the anvil and I'm just going to carefully open up this cross. like so. Now with that opened up, I went to the power hammer to thin out the part a little bit uh, because it's 20 mil thick at the moment uh, and I just hammered it down to about 12 mil thickness. Now the finished part will be about 6 mil thick, 6 to 7 mil thick, uh, but you need that bulk in there so that you can upset those corners uh, where the branches join up. So with it thinned out a little bit I will then line up the arms of the cross because uh, as you can see they're not quite crossing over. There's a bit of a um, discrepancy in their alignment. So basically head over to the hardy and knock them in line with each other. So I'll start this off with a hammer and then move on to a set hammer which gives me a nice clean transition. So that you then end up with an X like this. So, once again, I will head out under the power hammer and I will thin this down another few millimetres. Uh, and this is all about having clean material to work with and not having any folds or any galls in the way. And at this stage, I will thin it a little further using a turning hammer. Uh, and this is taken down to about 7mm at this stage. So with the thickness roughly where I want it, I will then use the Bic and my ball peen hammer and I will start radiusing the transitions between the arms of the cross, like so. Uh, because they are radiused on the original rather than square. I could potentially have used a top and bottom fuller rather than a angled fuller rather than a right angle fuller, uh, which would possibly have made my life a little bit easier. Uh, but there we go. So the next thing is I will draw out these arms uh, and I'm using a combination of hammers here. I'm using my ball peen hammer, my turning hammer and a big lump hammer. And I'm just drawing out these arms to be 150 millimetres long each. 
Uh, now I started with the same thickness of material for every arm, so I know that if they are 150mm then they will be the same, roughly, sec roughly the same section. And then with the arms drawn to length I will work on those transitions between the arms and make sure that that stays nice and radiused. Then I will take several low heats and just planish those arms up to make them nice and clean and crisp. Like so. So then I will put some extra marks on there and I have marked up 80mm from the centre and 30mm out from that 80mm mark. And the outer mark I will taper down like so, so that's a 30mm taper, which is that's a 30mm section from the end which is becoming uh, probably about 40mm, 45mm of taper. And you end up with something like that. So at this stage I will then take a chisel and using a piece of annealed mild steel I will then split that taper in half. Uh, and this is going to become the horns of the bull. So you can split this in a single heat, it's quite a short length. And you end up with something like that. So with all the splits done, I will move the horns out from each other and I will start cleaning those up because there is a bit of flashing from the chiselling. Uh, and I want to draw them out and make them nice and pointy as well. So again, I continue this into quite a low heat and it just allows me to get a nice smooth clean finish uh, on these horns. And then with the horns straight I will just knock them out of the way like so. We end up with something like this after repeating the process four times. So with all four horns ready I will go back down 30mm to that first mark which is 80mm from the centre of the piece and I will cut halfway through the material. Uh, then I will take a nice warm second heat and I will just fold this over. Uh, and this is going to form the head of the bull. So close that up and move the horns a little further out of the way. Uh, then take a good welding heat and weld it up. So done this with a single welding heat. And then as it's welded I li literally just go into shaping the head. So as you can see on the drawing the heads are very simple. Um, there's no detail on them whatsoever apart from the horns. Uh, and they are quite flat as well. The, um, the four bull heads on the basket, they have a lot more detail in them. These ones are literally just folded flat. So here are the heads welded up. So the next stage is to literally take a decent welding heat and just fold those heads over. Again you can do this in a single heat. Just make sure everything's lying nice and flat and cleanly together. And with the head folded we will spread out these horns to be where they need to be. So I'll just push them out of each other's way and then I will start rounding them over the bick of the anvil. And I'll try and get as even a curve as possible. 
coming away from the head. And with the horns curved to where they need to be, I'll just use the very tip of the bick to just put that little upward flick on the end of the horns. Which will get it matching fairly closely to the original ones. And here we have it. The capital is almost ready to fit. Now I've not punched the hole in uh, the centre from which it will be riveted onto the shaft of the stand. Uh, we're going to keep that till we actually get round to assembling. So, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you've learnt something from this. Here is my current list of Patreon donors. Uh, thanks a lot, chaps. Uh, you do help me out an awful lot in making these videos. Uh, special thanks to Aaron Nelson, who's my star Patreon donor. And I will see you all next week for the next episode.